Welcome to Dr. K's lecture cast in anatomy. Today we are going to cover a small topic about the thyroid gland. We are going to make it integrated by discussing various aspects of the thyroid gland. So here I am going to discuss about the gross anatomy which means the presenting parts and relations of the thyroid gland where I can divide it into apex, base, surfaces and borders of the gland. We are going to discuss about the microscopic features that is the histology of the thyroid gland followed by the development of the thyroid gland and developmental anomalies and clinical anatomy. Many of us know this thyroid gland is considered to be very very important endocrine gland in human body next to the pituitary gland and this thyroid gland along with its secretion called as the thyroid hormone T3, T4 and TSH has so much influence in many of the activities happening in our body. Mainly the thyroid gland controls the basal metabolic rate. So whatever metabolism happens in your body, uh, it can be the fat, carbohydrate, protein, minerals, especially the calcium, all these have a total dependency on this thyroid gland secretion. So let's get into anatomical aspect of the thyroid gland. So what is thyroid? Thyroid means shield like something protecting. So can you see here this is thyroid cartilage. Again it is shield shaped. The thyroid gland is also shield shaped. Don't ever misinterpret that the th gland is called as thyroid gland because it is related to the thyroid cartilage. The gland and the cartilage are named as thyroid because it is shield like. So where does the gland extends from? Usually we say extend anteriorly and posteriorly. So anteriorly means it extends till the, can you see here, till the tracheal cartilage, till the fourth tracheal cartilage or the fifth tracheal cartilage and till the middle of the thyroid cartilage above. So from the little above to the thyroid cartilage and below till the fourth or fifth tracheal ring. If you go posteriorly, we say the vertebral level, fifth cervical vertebra to the first thoracic vertebra. And there are two lobes here. Can you see the two lateral lobes of the thyroid gland connected by a bridge-like structure? Bridge means, always remember the term isthmus. So there is a isthmus connecting the two lateral lobes of the thyroid gland. So the thyroid gland is an endocrine gland situated in front and sides of the neck. So can you see here, till the middle of the thyroid cartilage to the fifth or sixth tracheal rings. And isthmus lies against, the bridging part lies against the second to fourth tracheal rings. And the gland is always said to be larger in females than compared to males. Any idea? Because there are so many important milestones happening in the life cycle of a female which we mainly we can say menstruation and then pregnancy. So to meet the respective metabolic needs of the body and during pregnancy of the uh, uterus that is the growing uh, fetus the gland enlarges or it increases, the size increases to meet the metabolic needs. I always say any gland is covered by a capsule. There will be a true capsule and a false capsule. We name it as true capsule because this capsule is always derived from the connective tissue of the gland. The gland truly contributes the capsule. So remember true capsule. And a dense venous plexus is seen deep to the true capsule. And false capsule, F for F, remember, derived from a fascia. Investing layer of deep cervical fascia. You would have read the fascia has different uh, names where it is related to the different aspects. So there is one such called as the pretracheal layer. So the false capsule is derived from pretracheal layer. And it is thickened and forms a suspensory ligament. Remember this alone. False capsule derived from pretracheal layer and it thickens to form the suspensory ligament connecting the lobes of the gland to the cricoid cartilage. That's why 
whenever the person is asked to lift their chin and allowed to swallow we see the gland moving along with the deglutition or swallowing can we see here the comparison of the thyroid and the prostate gland this is a comparison to show what happens to the venous plexus while performing any surgery with these two glands prostate gland is seen only in the men and why there is a comparison i said there is a venous plexus deep to the true capsule and there is a venous plexus in between the false capsule and the true capsule now a surgery uh we can say thyroidectomy is going to be performed and prostatectomy is going to get performed so how will the glandular tissue be removed if in case you remove the gland alone leaving the venous plexus there might be injury to the venous plexus and an alarming hemorrhage can happen so what we do is during thyroidectomy the gland is removed along with the true capsule whereas in prostate gland since it is seen between the true capsule and the false capsule the gland alone can be removed leaving the intact capsule this is a comparison this might be asked when there is a discussion on spotters or as a um, when you write any exams it might be asked as a mcq or a toma question to, to show a comparison between thyroid and prostate gland in relation to the situation of venous plexus so that is what i have explained here where it is situated the venous plexus and how the gland is removed during surgical intervention this is what i have mentioned here and then coming to the presenting parts and relations mostly we say uh, the presenting parts and relations because whenever you perform a surgery it is very important to know the relations okay so each lobe has an apex a base three surfaces lateral or superficial medial posterior lateral and two borders which are the anterior and posterior border now coming to the apex and base so here apex and base are related to one artery and one nerve each can you see here this is the apex and this is the base among the two lateral lobes of the thyroid gland i have taken one lobe one lateral lobe to say the relations superiorly apex is considered to be superior remember that aspect so superior thyroid artery and inferiorly inferior thyroid artery what is the nerve related here external laryngeal nerve to the superior thyroid artery and inferior thyroid artery is related to the recurrent laryngeal nerve please note these two artery and nerves at the apex and base because it has some surgical importance whenever thyroidectomy is performed i'll discuss in the clinical anatomy so here the presenting parts and surfaces can you see lateral or superficial medial and posterior lateral so here superficial s for s remember all four are muscles sternohyoid sternothyroid superior belly of omohyoid and sternocleidomastoid medially two tubes two muscles and two nerves this is very important when they ask a, a ospi or a practical based question they'll pin the thyroid gland and they will ask the medial relations two tubes what are the tubes related here one is the windpipe and one is the foot pipe windpipe is the trachea and foot pipe is the esophagus two muscles take one from esophagus that is esophagus is anyways a continuation of pharynx so lower most part of the pharynx has the inferior constrictor and trachea nothing but continuation of the larynx so take one muscle from the larynx which is externally the only muscle which is the externally seen muscle of the larynx is the cricothyroid so it is supplied by external laryngeal nerve inferior constrictor has two nerve supply external laryngeal and the recurrent laryngeal so it becomes very easy to relate the two tubes with the two muscles and the two nerves posterior lateral carotid sheath and its contents so since i'm screen recording here can we just draw a diagram and discuss on this so let's go here uh yes so here when you see the thyroid gland i'm just going to take a transverse section and going to draw take any color 
So here I am going to draw the transverse section through which I can see the two lateral lobes. These are the two lateral lobes of the thyroid gland connected by a bridge. So here superficially in front this is anterior aspect and this is posterior aspect okay so here and this one is the medial aspect so what we are going to draw, do is we are going to draw muscles so here i'm going to take yeah muscles we usually draw in brown color right so i'm going to take first one from the outermost aspect sternocleidomastoid and then we have the sternohyoid superior belly of omohyoid and then we have the sternothyroid. So these are the muscles in the superficial surface S for S sternocleidomastoid, sternohyoid, superior belly of omohyoid and sternothyroid. Posterolaterally see this is posterior but lateral we see something called as the carotid sheath why it is called as carotid sheath because it encloses common carotid artery artery is always seen medially and then internal jugular vein and there is a nerve nerve you can use either yellow color or green color this is the vagus nerve and anteriorly you see one more chain called as the ansa cervicalis and posterior to the carotid sheath you see the sympathetic chain and medially we saw two tubes what are the two tubes here the two tubes here are the the anterior one is the trachea and posterior to the trachea we see the esophagus so uh, when you see in a textbook most of the textbooks will have a typical artistic diagrams we'll be thinking how to reproduce this diagram you just saw how did i drew how did i draw this the transverse section of the thyroid gland superficial structures the sternocleidomastoid sternohyoid superior belly of omohyoid and sternothyroid this forms the lateral or superficial relations posterior but laterally we see carotid sheath with its contents is well and good if in case you have time to write or explain you can say what are the contents of the carotid sheath as well and medially this is the medial aspect can you see towards the midline so medial aspect we have two tubes trachea and esophagus and there are muscles related to larynx which is the cricothyroid and inferior constrictor which is related to the pharynx. Remember trachea is the continuation of larynx and esophagus is continuous of pharynx. So please remember this. So next is the, we saw the relations here and I drew a simple diagram so that this diagram you can just copy it and you can take notes where I have shown the relations lateral, medial and posterolateral relations. This is well enough if you draw it even more. I am not an artist so even if you draw it much more better diagram. A simple diagram is well enough if you draw this in the exam. And coming to the borders. Anterior border and posterior border. Remember superior thyroid artery gives one anterior branch which runs along the anterior border and posteriorly remember one artery comes from superior thyroid artery above and ascending branch from inferior thyroid artery below say so they both anastomose and parathyroid glands are seen okay so please remember this so coming to isthmus isthmus is very very important go back to this diagram you can say the relations of the isthmus. Can you see this is the isthmus part, right? So as usual, the skin and then sternocleidomastoid won't be related here. Only the sternohyoid, superior belly of homohyoid will be related to the isthmus. So relations of the isthmus anteriorly, sternohyoid and sternothyroid muscles, jugular veins, anterior jugular veins, skin and fascia. And posteriorly, we saw the extent of isthmus right from the second to fourth tracheal rings. So the posterior relation to the isthmus is the second to fourth tracheal rings. Two borders, upper border and lower border. Upper border is related to the anterior branches of the right and left superior thyroid arteries and lower branches are related to the inferior thyroid veins. 
can we draw one more diagram here so take this as the isthmus of the thyroid gland okay just a schematic representation and this is the thyroid gland so whatever is related to the superficial surface of the thyroid lobes will also be related to the isthmus so there are muscles covering the isthmus here which is the sternothyroid sternohyoid and omohyoid muscles and we saw this is the anterior border of the isthmus so, sorry superior border of the isthmus and inferior border of isthmus we saw superior thyroid artery is here it sends one anterior branches this side and there is also one anterior branch this side so they both anastomose here okay and then inferiorly there are veins which drain the thyroid gland and leave the inferior aspect of the isthmus so inferior thyroid veins is related here remember in that way let's get back and then arterial supply of the thyroid gland remember there are two main arteries and three veins and sometimes there is a third artery here superior thyroid artery inferior thyroid artery and thyroidia imma artery okay superior thyroid artery branch from external carotid artery inferior thyroid artery is a branch of thyro cervical trunk which again is a branch of subclavian artery and thyroidia imma artery which can either come from the brachiocephalic trunk or a direct branch from arch of aorta venous drainage superior thyroid vein middle thyroid vein and inferior thyroid vein drains into the internal jugular vein the superior and middle drains into internal jugular whereas inferior thyroid vein goes directly to the brachiocephalic vein if in case you don't remember from where they branch out well and good if you write superior thyroid artery inferior thyroid artery and thyroidia imma artery and venous drainage you can just mention the veins if you are much particular and you can remember it very well the first two goes into the drains please remember i keep telling on this again and again veins drain arteries supply so a vein can always go and drain into veins alone an inferior thyroid vein alone drains into the brachiocephalic vein next is the lymphatic drainage remember upper part of the gland larynx is related larynx continues as trachea so lower part of the gland drains into pre and para tracheal lymph nodes upper part into the pre laryngeal lymph nodes coming to the histology histology of thyroid gland you should write four important points thyroid follicles that is the each follicles are lined by epithelium that is the follicular cells and there are para follicular means in between or around the thyroid follicle there are para follicular cells now coming to functional histology means thyroid follicle what is the function they secrete t3 and t4 and tsh okay so there is a in between you can see colloid the colloid is rich in iodine the iodine is very essential for the thyroid hormones synthesis and it is rich in a protein called as thyroglobulin so these things you should remember thyroid follicle thyroid follicle cells can be columnar and cuboidal columnar means when they are active and cuboidal means they are taking rest so remember that para follicular cells they are c cells c cells secrete calcitonin c for c remember that okay two types of cells follicular cells para follicular cells okay and there is a colloid rich in thyroglobulin the colloid is rich in thyroglobulin active phase where the secretion happens that is why the cells are tall so columnar resting phase they are cuboidal and para follicular cells secrete calcitonin which helps in the regulation of calcium levels along with parathormone coming to the development just see this diagram once these are the pharyngeal arches and pouches so this part, this is the endoderm okay so thyroid gland develops as a median thyroglossal diverticulum from the floor of the primitive pharynx okay this is foramen cecum now let's go back draw one diagram imagine 
this is the floor of the primitive pharynx okay from here a median anything in the midline is called as median thyro median endodermal because endoderm diverticulum since this is going to give rise to thyroid gland we call as median thyroglossal diverticulum that is thyroid gland from the tongue okay primitive pharynx the, here you can see the foramen cecum this is not this big so here once it reaches the area where the gland has to develop it develops into a bifid lobe after this when you see this duct this thyroglossal duct disappears starts disappearing okay and this bifid lobes develops into a proper thyroid gland okay and the isthmus and this lateral lobe is also contributed by the fourth pouch the fourth pouch and the fifth pouch joins okay so that leads to the fifth pouch usually disappears so the lateral lobe of the thyroid gland is also contributed by the fourth endodermal pouch also that is how the gland is completely developed and sometimes this median thyroglossal duct remnants are seen either as a thyroglossal cyst or a connection or a communication which we call as fistula okay so these are the things but what happens if the thyroid gland doesn't descend down into the proper region or it descends further to the sternum so you can see resto re retro sternal thyroid glands developing or they don't descend down properly and below the tongue as the as the lingual thyroids and sometimes an additional or accessory pyramidal lobe of the thyroid gland can also be seen developing what happens is mostly these the, the development of the thyroid gland even if even though it develops in various other regions like related to the hyoid that is related to the hyoid bone or if it is related to the sternum here the function is not the function is not affected the thyroid functions is normal but in case if it starts invading the neighboring structures like the trachea or esophagus there might be some difficulty in swallowing and breathing so accordingly some surgical intervention can be done so that the anomalies which is creating some issues can be sorted out so let's get back to the presentation i have drawn the same diagram here can you see thyroglossal duct disappearing gradually and sometimes if it is seen as a communication it is called as fistula if it is seen as a round shaped structure here it is called as the thyroglossal cyst so these are the gland may develop at abnormal sites lingual supra and infra hyoid and retro sternal anything with the term retro means behind the sternum <clears throat> and what is the clinical anatomy whenever you have to palpate the swellings of the thyroid gland during hypo and hyperthyroidism the gland is palpated from the behind thyroidectomy involves removal of the gland along with the true capsule we saw that already right true capsule to avoid excessive hemorrhage and ligation when i spoke about the relations of the apex and the base we saw the relations of the superior thyroid artery with the external laryngeal nerve and inferior thyroid artery to the recurrent laryngeal nerve this is called as neurovascular relationship so again let's draw one diagram to explain you say for example this is the thyroid gland okay so this is the apex so here i told you superior thyroid artery and the external laryngeal nerve is related so here superior thyroid artery and external laryngeal nerve are intimately related but when they approach the gland they both split away divert two friends are coming along one nerve and one artery but on reaching the apex they diverge in their path so it will be very much whenever you are performing a surgery you are not supposed to injure the artery right it will cause alarming hemorrhage so ligation 
tying of the artery is important. So superior thyroid artery is tied near the gland. Whereas inferior thyroid artery and recurrent laryngeal nerve, what happens is they are intimate towards the gland. Okay, towards the base of the gland, they are very much intimate. Whereas as they go, they both diverge. Uh, they move away from the gland. So how the inferior thyroid artery can be ligated? The inferior thyroid artery is kept away or ligated away from the gland. So this is the importance of the neurovascular relationship. Keep the superior thyroid artery to, towards the gland and keep the inferior thyroid artery away. So remember in this aspect. Okay, let's get back to the lecture. So this is the clinical anatomy and uh, for the hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism what happens? Hypothyroidism causes cretinism in infants and myxedema in adults. In physiology you can read the features of this in detail and tumors of the gland. What happens? The gland has a um, what to say a proper room to be situated. What happens if it starts expanding in the room? The adjacent neighbors are much disturbed. Okay, if you talk in a lower volume, it is well and good. If you shout and make noise, the neighbors are disturbed. So remember that. Who are the neighbors here of the thyroid gland? Larynx, which continues as the trachea. And pharynx, which continues as esophagus. So larynx is a voice box. What happens? There is dysphonia, speech difficulty. Dysphagia, difficulty in eating because esophagus is invaded. And dyspnea. Problem in breathing because trachea is also invaded. So adjacent structures are affected. So the relevant features or difficulty is seen in speech, swallowing and breathing. And what are the possible practical questions? So this is the thyroid gland. Can you see? This is thyroid cartilage, the Adam's apple. Okay. So if the gland is pinned, please remember... If it is pinned here, it is isthmus of the thyroid gland. If it is pinned here, it is a lateral lobe of the thyroid gland. So what are the possibilities? It might The questions might be medial relations, two tubes, two muscles, two nerves, blood supply, superior thyroid artery, inferior thyroid artery and three veins, superior, middle and inferior thyroid veins. Relations of the isthmus, at least remember to write the superior thyroid artery in the superior border and inferior thyroid veins in the inferior border. Development, just remember endodermal, diverticulum, thyroglossal duct, lateral lobes and contribution from the fourth pouch. And the C cells are derived from the ultimobranchial body which is a fusion of the fifth pouch to a part of the fourth endodermal pouch. This is what I told. Check which part of the gland is pinned before writing the relations, whether the isthmus is pinned whether the isthmus is pinned or the thyroid gland because relations vary a little between the isthmus and the lateral lobe so please take this lecture as a quick review of any topics and it is not intended as a guide for any treatments or clinical interventions if in case you like my lecture give a thumbs up and share it among with your friends and subscribe which helps you to know whenever I upload any new videos. See you in another interesting lecture. Thank you.